Okay, we are here, guys, to play a little Goblin Slayer and to show off the Goblin Slayer game system that I've been building for Foundry. So uh, this is a fun two-for-one uh, gaming. Not, not only do you guys get to play Goblin Slayer with me uh, on Foundry, but you guys get to check out how bad my game system is as well. <laughs> it's gonna, it's going to be fun. Uh, also, hey, you'll find a way to kill us anyway. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Death, uh, death is very likely in this game from the sounds of things, <laughs> from the way I've been reading it. I'm like, oh, there's a couple ways to die for characters. Oh man! But uh, anyways, I'm a ways to die. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 just as a reminder uh, for anyone watching this video, you're going to see my players with their Tales of the Valiant characters. So right now, Hair Doctor looks like Zix, and Lorendar looks like. Gorn, but we will be figuring out what our characters are going to be as we create them and go through character creation here. So this is basically a session zero for our Goblin Slayer game that we have yet to name. So hopefully we'll have a, a fun little group name similar to uh, the Valiant Tribe for Tales of the Valiant. I so, mean, to even uh, see our characters, we have to make them first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we will start with character creation here. And the first thing uh, as we follow the rules here for normal creation is going to be, uh, let's see here, normal creation. So step one for normal creation is choosing a race. Now I know, uh, Hair Doctor, you had said you were curious about the, uh, uh, your character concept was being a dragon knight, right? Yeah, basically. Okay. So let's go ahead and open up your character sheet. And if you go to the description tab, uh, up on the top there. Description. Now, uh, actually, because of another person by the name of Elan, he provided a Polish translation for the game. Do me a favor, and I want you to try something oh. out, all right? Go into the game settings for me in the top right tab of the whole game and go, okay. to, go to configure settings. All right, configure settings. Now, in the all section, or for core, if you scroll down a little bit, you should see language preference. Yeah, I see custom Polski. Yeah, try that for me. Go ahead and switch it to, to Polish and let me know if it changes everything into... Oh, uh, I got that reload. Yep. And... Uh, wait. Gotta find my character. Hmm. It's a little weird looking. From uh, what I can see, not. Okay, so it nothing. Doesn't... Yeah, right now I don't think it changes nothing. Okay, so maybe it must be on my end. I might have to switch it on, on my end or not. I was curious to see if it would do it just for you or if I had to have the whole thing set in Polish. Eh, don't worry. Okay. Well, in, in any event, uh, Ilan was kind enough to uh, reach out to me and offer to do the translation, so... We've gone ahead and done that. Oh, great. So you have the lizard man class uh, or the race already selected. So you, you know everything uh, from the book is set into the compendiums, which is super handy. But man, was yeah. that ever a nightmare? Was someone going to say something? No, I'm just uh, saying, yeah. Okay. So also the fact that I sometimes think in English should say something about me right now. Oh, okay. All right. So we have our lizard man set up now. If you want to see, now that your character here is built into the game, if you right-click on the portrait for Lizardman, you'll get a context menu that pops up. Okay? Um, hmm. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, checks, you can see a Draconic Heritage. Yeah, I see the basic... Uh, All the race information, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So that general was just... Skills, general skills, fixed scores, etc. Yeah. So th there's two things here, obviously. You're going to see these are the skills you're going to get for being a lizard man. So you get strength and immunity, which means you get resistance checks. Uh, plus one to strength resistance checks, which would be which will come in handy later on down the road. Uh, you have dark vision, which may or may dark not be... Dark vision. Yes, super. It's going to be super handy. 
And then you also have Draconic Heritage. Now, all of these skills you get for being a Lizard Man, they start at level one, which we will fix in a minute. And then you have your primarily, primary and secondary ability scores. You can either decide to take the fixed or randomly determine your scores. So do you have any idea what you'd like to do for these? Do you want to take them random or do you want to go with fixed? Um, I mean, from what I can see, uh, from the random, I would get... I have basically third of a chance to get better, a third of a chance to get worse, and one third of a chance for nothing to change. So I think I'm for now we'll try to get uh, the fixed uh, scars, and then if something. Uh, Bothers me, I will talk to you if before starting the campaign. If okay. That is all right. Yeah, that's fine. So what we'll do is, uh, let me see here. Just want to follow along with the I'm going to drop the race here. Okay, yeah. So the next step was determining your scores, which we've done. So we're going to go with fixed scores. Let's go back to your stats tab. Okay. And in the stats tab, go ahead and start entering in the fixed score numbers. So four for strength, three for psyche, technique, and so on. And then do the secondary ability scores. Oh, three. So the form is going to auto-populate every time you make a change. As you see, your strength focus, your strength endurance is getting updated. All of a sudden we have a 20 for technique. <laughs> Yeah, uh, just <laughs> just uh, misplaced the cursor, so no, no uh, problem. And then no, for... I didn't misplace the cursor, the cursor <laughs> right from to the beginning. Yeah. All right, and then go ahead and put in the fixed scores for your secondary abilities as well. Yeah, I already done that. Oh, yep, yeah, yeah. see them coming through now. Okay, great. So now you'll see you have, for instance, your strength focus is a seven, your psyche focus is a six. The The game system has already auto-populated these for you, which is very handy. And on occasion, I may ask you to roll these uh, as checks. So when you hover over technique focus or psyche reflex, those will automatically roll, uh, you know, roll the dice for you with a bonus of uh, the, the combined number, which is going to be super handy. All right, next on the line here is going to be, now that we have the ability scores, determining a history. So what you'll want to do is, in the Lizard Man racial sheet, there's going to be a little oh. context link. So if you don't have that up still, bring that back up, and then there's going to see Lizard Man origin table. Okay. Now when you so... click... Go ahead. I roll 2d6 or? Yeah, yep. You'll roll 2d6 to determine what kind of uh, history you have. So anywhere between being an, an adventurer previously to this or even being a king spawn. And this will be some extra stuff that you get for level one. So there's a possibility that you get extra uh, classes here. Okay, so I just... Uh... Press the Draconic Heritage, or... Oh, uh, let's see here. Nope, nope. Um, let me double Just check. roll to the 6 on the... Uh, on the chat. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have the chart set up for the 2d6 to roll, so you'll actually have to go down into the uh, the dice tray and pop, uh, pop in 2d6 and just roll okay, that Okay, rolling now. Yep. Oh! Look Ooh. at that. You uh, were previously an adventurer. So you got a two, which means you were previously an adventurer, and you can pick any one class for free to add to your, your character. Huh. So nice. Go ahead and add one class or one level of anything. Uh, since you were talking about being a, uh, a, a dragon knight, you could either add one level to fighter or one level to dragon priest for free. I think I'm going to go for now. 
and uh, if there are many more i will try any more uh, uh, classes i will just basically try to balance them mm -hmm. all right so which class level did you pick because i didn't see that i my picked fighter okay great let me uh close that and see if it will yep all right perfect now let's go back to your description and in the history go ahead and click the little uh, notepad icon that comes up when you hover in that zone to write in that you were previously a uh an adventurer so you know what your background was uh in history yep if you hover your mouse in the little blank zone there should be a little icon that pops up to the right side that'll be the text editor okay Safe. All right. The next item is going to be, let's see here, add a bonus point to a primary ability score. So let's go back to your stats page and you get to add plus one to any primary ability score. So plus one to strength, psyche, technique, or intelligence. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna ask, uh, what stats does the dragon priest use? Cause I just wanna ah. put everything in strength and then just do nothing with the dragon priest. Psyche. Psyche is their primary uh, ability. Okay, so... 4-4. Four, four. Okay. Perfect. All right, from there, now that we have the bonus point there, we write down your status. What does that mean? Let's go down to that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Skills, Actually, class ask. description. All right, I'm just going to scroll down here a bit. Okay, so your status. Oh, all right. So a character's status will change from moment to moment during their adventure, keeping track of it. All is what the status section is for. This is where you write down your character's life force, oh, wounds. movement speed, Oops. and spell uses, and, and wounds. All right. So in order to determine this, we need you to roll 2d6 three times. And then from that, those numbers are going to be put into different places. I'm going to copy this for now. So first, first roll. All right. Eight. Okay. That's a good one. Second one. Seven. Okay. Third one. Nine. Okay, now there's some things to, to note here. One of those dice rolls, seven, eight, or nine, is going to be your life force. The other one is going to be for your movement. And the other one is going to be if you can cast spells or not. And that one's I'm... going to be extremely important since you have Dragon Priest as an idea here. So, uh, let's see here. Determining spell use. If the dice uh, if the dice roll was two through six, you have zero uses of spells. If it was seven through nine, you have one. If it was 10 through 11, you have two. And if it was 12 or higher, or in this case, if it was a 12, you could have three spell uses. So, so I have one spell use, no matter what. <laughs> yeah. And since, you know, since it works for seven through nine, you might as well use the seven as your yeah, spell I'm use. I'm going to use the seven. <laughs> okay. So let's go to the spells tab. And go ahead and put in the little text editor one for spell uses. Okay. So what happens there is it opens up the amount of spells you can cast per day. Now, uh, the one nice thing is just to kind of preface this, you can overcast. And when you overcast, you gain fatigue for casting more spells than you can cast per day. So if for whatever reason you find that you really need to cast a second second or even maybe a third spell you can fatigue yourself and cast more spells but for the time being you can only cast one spell now the next thing would be to determine which die you want to use for your life force and which die for movement i mean i'm gonna try to do something like a paladin basically so i think the most i will do what well, i will do 
eight for move and uh, nine for life. Okay. So go ahead and put the nine in the life force box on the left sidebar there. Oh, there is also something in the lizard man description that says race movement modifier of two. So do I get the move of 10 or something like that? Well, you said you wanted to put nine for your life force, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So swap that because I see an eight right now. Oh, sorry. Yep. And then oh, for sorry. your movement, you'll just put uh, eight times or yeah, eight times two for a total of 16. I don't know if like that or no. I just put in the put in the total of sixteen. It doesn't do the math. Okay. All right. So now we have those all set up for your status, and then after that, the next thing is acquire experience points and write down your adventure level. Well, those are already filled in for you. So if you'll see underneath your status, you have experience points. Never change the cumulative experience points until you get more. So right now, everyone starts with 3,000 experience points set both into the cumulative and the current. And then you also get 15 uh, advancement points and you're a level one adventurer. So what we do now is we acquire classes. And this is where you spend the current, the second one down. You're gonna spend those 3,000 points uh, to buy classes. So, oh. yeah, <laughs> this is where it gets a little interesting. You don't actually pick, you don't like, you don't start in a class like. So is that a source? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, it's it's uh, very similar to that. So let me get you how much these are all going to cost to go up in levels. So we're going to scan down. And from here, we acquire classes. So you have the freedom of choice to pick whatever you want. And then each type has proper equipment for them, uh, weapons and armor. And then in order to get one level in a class, you're going to spend 1,000 experience points. To get to level two, you spend another 1,000 points. So you will have spent a total of 2,000 points. And then to get to level three of a class, you have to spend 1,500 additional points or a total of 3,500. So since you were lucky enough to get uh, a level in fighter right off the bat for your background, you could, yeah, go, go ahead. I could make uh, two, levels fight, two levels in fighter in, and one in uh, dragon priest. Well, you would still have a thousand or so experience points left over. So you could be a level two fighter and a level two dragon priest, or you could save the thousand experience points for going to like level three fighter or so on down the line. I think I'm gonna use of the experience for that because if, if playing Strat taught me anything, do it now. Yeah. Now, let me explain one thing since you're going partial caster here. The amount of spells you have in your quote unquote spell book is equal to the number of uh, the class level. So since you're a level two dragon priest right now, without any skills, you only have two spells available to you. Okay. All right. So since you've spent a thousand experience to bring yourself up to level two, that would drop you down to 2000. And then you spend another 2000 to get level two dragon priest. Go ahead and uh, put current points to zero in your XP. Okay. All right. Now that we have that, uh, we can kind of skip over some of this stuff. So just so you're aware, uh, there are descriptions in the, <clears throat> the rule book of, excuse me, what classes can use what. Fighters are really good with pretty much all weapons except for close combat and staves. They can't also use ranged weapons, which is really weird. I mean, they can, they just don't get the class bonus like rangers or scouts do. So you can always bring a ranged weapon with you and you're just not going to be as good with it. They are primarily good with swords, maces, hammers, and spears, I believe. But not throwing them. Uh, but not throwing them, no. <laughs> not good at throwing, which is funny. Uh, and then Dragon Priests is uh, 
doesn't really have any weapons, but they have some some armor that they they're good with. So, for instance, uh, dragon priests, I believe, can wear all types of weapons or all types of armor, and they can also use shields. So you're good there if you want to bring a shield with you. Yeah, I mean, I thought about using basically a uh, sword and shield. Yeah. Okay. To honor, to honor our one true savior, as mm. someone with a uh, weird hat would say. Mm hmm. All right. Now let's go to your skills because the next section is going to be acquire skills and spells. So for your current skills that you got for being a lizard man, go ahead and bump all those up to rank one because you get rank one for free. Okay. All right. Ah, oh, something didn't. Yeah, okay. tabbing is a little weird with this. I got to see if I can fix that or whatnot. But you have all those set up. Now, to gain skills in this game, you buy them. And let's see, how much was it? I believe it's... Okay, so in order to buy uh, an adventurer skill something that will help you with your weapons or whatnot. It, it costs you five points of your advancement points that you have. You have a total of 15. So in theory, you could get three adventure skills to go with the one that you already have, or you could also buy beginner general level skills. And the general skills only cost you one point to buy. So this one is where it's going to take a little while to decide what you want to add to your character. So for instance, if you were thinking of using a sword and shield, then you might want to look into some of the skills that are going to be good for, you know, using a sword or using a shield or even armor, as well as potentially some of the spell casting skills that will allow you to either get more uses or get more spells. So while you're looking at the skills, we're going to switch over to Lorendar here and help him create his character, okay? All right. Okay, so let me pull up Lorendar's character sheet. And since I've been helping uh, Hair Doctor with his character, have you thought about what you want to do? Uh, yeah, a bit. All right, have you started? It looks like you may have been filling out some stuff already. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like you picked Lizard Man as well, huh? Yeah, that okay. was that was what I was originally thinking of. Okay, cool. What is the concept? Like, where where are you going with your character? What are you trying to build out for? Uh, so I'm thinking either. Well, I'm definitely going monk. Oh, okay. And I'm thinking I might do shaman as well. Oh. Now, Shaman is interesting. Shaman is more of a elemental caster from what I've seen of some of the spells. They do, they are able to summon up spirits, but they're primarily, you know, earth, wind, fire, water attack spells. So they're more direct damage, which is pretty handy. But a, a, a monk shaman, it's an interesting combo. I like it. All right. And you've went for your your average standard uh, ability scores that I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because Shaman is uh, Psyche Intelligence as their primary. Right. Now, I think... And then, of course, Monk is Strength. Are they Strength-based? I wasn't quite sure. Yeah. Uh, strength and... Actually, I'm seeing here the they go? Technique and Reflex. Right, hold on. I've lost my place on the PDF. Uh, if you go to page 95, that should bring you to the monk traits. Oh, yeah, technical reflex. Yeah, you're right. Now, there's nothing wrong that you, know, you can totally play a lizard man uh, monk shaman if you want. That's perfectly fine. Because you do get that bonus point to bring... Uh, you could use that one extra bonus point to bring your technique up to a three if you wanted to. 
And there may be ways to modify these ability scores later on as well through gear or uh, spells as well. Thoughts? Mm. see here just for the heck of it oh um yeah i'm, I'm just looking up the mm -hmm. oh i want the classes oh yeah okay i was trying to just see if i if my my minor goblin slayer rule book had anything for the races or not uh, let's see here. There we go. Races. Ironically, if you were looking for a good race for uh, monk shaman, Rhea, which is also technically your your halfling, they have a, a fixed score of four in psyche and three in technique and four in reflexes but they do have a one for strength so <laughs> i don't want to push you out of uh, out of lizard man if you had the idea for lizard man because that could still work out really well if you're looking to min max then maybe Rhea is what you want yeah uh, and uh I've never really been into like the super turret races. Right. Um, Elf also would give you threes for their main items for psychic technique and reflex. And dwarf, not the greatest. And then human is very like twos all the way through for human for that combo not the greatest combo i think for monk shaman so i got these uh, side by side for people watching the video so they can see what i'm looking at here mm -hmm. So like I said here, so we have our lizard man for monk with primaries being psyche because of also wanting the shaman. Uh, psychic technique and reflex, we're looking at 322 two, two on the lizard man for fixed average scores. Threes across the board for elf or uh, 434 for Rhea. If you really want, like I said, if you wanted to min max, elf would be your average and lizard man is not... I, wouldn't, I don't want to say below average. They are going to give you basically average across the board for just about everything. So Lizard Man could be a great way to, uh, to balance out some of the other areas that you might find yourself really needing to, uh, to, to adjust for certain things. Like, you know, strength reflex for some reason or intelligence uh, endurance checks. Lizard Man could still be a great a great way to get like a nice average bonus modifier for the rolls. Yeah. It's just funny because in the description for Lizard Man, it says they, ex they excel as monks. That's... And yet their technique is so low. Yeah. That's some false advertising. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can, like I said, you do get that bonus point. So you could take the, the, the two in technique and raise it to a three. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. Because there's, there's other benefits. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just want to double check because I want to make sure the book is saying what it is about Lizard Men. Just to make sure. I think I think it, I think they, they say they excel because of the Draconic Heritage bonuses. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, what I'm I'm double checking too is because I got most of my information from the book, but I also got it from a supplement website that uh, 
grab the most important information out of the rule book and put it on the website. So it's similar to certain uh, fifth edition websites that we use for tools and so on. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> I did see a couple typos here and there, so I just wanted to make sure that the fixed scores and the random determination scores were correct, but they are. All right, so we're going to leave Lorendar there. Go ahead and update your technique to a three, which will then update everything across the board. Okay, great. Now we need to determine a history. So go back to your descriptions tab and right click on your lizard man por uh, portrait, click on view. And when your skill, your race sheet shows up, click on the little context link that says lizard man origin table. Yeah. Okay. So this pulls up the, the, the small amount of rules that I have out of the book and gives you your origin table. Now I need you to go ahead and roll 2d6 to determine what kind of background you came from as a, uh, now that you're going into the life of a monk shaman. Okay, so we have a six, which means you are originally an engineer, <laughs> which is going to give you one- Hold up. Yep. Stop again, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> this is gonna be an interesting backstory. So. You're going to gain one level of scout for free. So go ahead in your stats tab, go ahead and put in one for scout, which is going to be super helpful because now you can do scout things even better. Uh, scouts are basically rogues in this game world and they can use uh, throwing weapons, which is handy. So if you want to throw something, now you have your scout level to back you up. And on top of that, because you're also an engineer, you get the craftsman skill for free. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and open up the compendium to the, uh, to the skills. And then you should be able to search for craftsman, uh, craftsman and drag and drop that It'll into- Adventurer General. Uh, if you go to the search icon just above it, oh, okay. and then search for craft, it will bring up the skill right away. And go ahead and drag and drop that in to your skills. I might have to update my, oh, there we go, perfect. And then if we look at the thing here, okay, there's, all right, I just wanna make sure that um, it wasn't specific. So this is just craftsmanship for everything. Some of these skills, when you open them up and look at the uh, the skill sheet, it will say, oh, for such and such. But that would usually say like craftsmanship colon XX, which, which means the XX has to be classified as something else. So go ahead and for all of your current skills, put those all at level one or rank one, I should say. I'm going to have to fix that in the, uh, in my JSON object. So it, that it starts at rank one, regardless, instead of going to maybe zero. I'll do, uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll switch it up and do monk scout. That could work. Make a ninja. Yeah, you could totally do that. That would be really cool too. All right. Now that we've got your history and go ahead and this, the description, let's go back to that tab real quick. In the history area, uh, when you mouse mm -hmm. into the blank area, you'll see a little notepad with a pen icon to the right. Click on that mm -hmm. button and then go ahead and enter in that your your history is an engineer, just so you have that, uh, have that there. And when you're done, there should be a little save button. Uh, it, it will look like an uh, old save school. Save and close that other. Yeah, it looks like an old school floppy disk. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. You can fill out all these little things later on once you get a better idea about your character and so forth. Now that we have your history, yeah. it's time to determine your status. So we're going to find out about your life force, your movement, and whether or not you can cast spells. Now, regardless if you can cast spells or not, 
we'll still need to figure that out. So what we're going to do here is you're going to roll 2d6 three times, and we will put the, the total of those numbers somewhere in your statuses. Hmm. You said three times, right? Yep. Oh, we got a 10. 10. An 11. And a 6. That's it. Okay. So the big question here is, are you going to go spellcasting at all? You're thinking, were you really thinking the ninja idea and then the ninja route instead because of the scout background? Yeah, yeah. I mean, technically you could also go for something akin to the artificer. True. Just reflavor the shaman would be <laughs> an invention, something like that. Well, unfortunately with a six, that six has to go somewhere. And if we're going to skew away from spellcasting, that means you have zero... Uh, you'll have zero way uh, uh, spell uses per day with that six, which means we can use the 11 and the 10 for life force and movement instead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's, yeah, I'll focus on monk and scout. Okay. So then what we'll do is we will ignore the six because you already have zero as spell uses for the day. And we will then go for. Uh, which what do you want to be able to do better? You want to move further or have more life force? Well, the scores are really close, so let's go life force because I know how hard you tend to hit me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go ahead and put an eleven for your life force, and then you're going to put a twenty in your move because you get times two for being a lizard man. All right, and I just want to double check to make sure that I have the uh, the life force correct. I want to make sure there's no bonuses or something for putting in life force straight from the dice roll or not. All right, so let's see here. A character's life force is determined by adding up their strength, psyche, endurance, and one of their dice rolls. Oh, okay, so we have to fix that actually. Oh. All right, so the life force is determined by adding up your strength, your psyche, and your endurance, and one of the dice rolls together. So this means you guys get a lot more life uh, life force points. Totally. You don't multiply, you just add them all together. So for uh, Lorendar's character, we're going to do the strength of four plus three from psyche, so that's seven, and your endurance, which is going to be a nine, plus 11 so you have a total of 20 life force points yeah i fixed mine i see that yes that should go in that that should be in that first section yeah 20. yep the one that you can click in okay. all right yeah and it says life force is important to all characters but for those who clash directly with their enemies such as fighters and monks wink wink <laughs> it is vital <laughs> <laughs> all right that's really good to see because i had a feeling that your life force should be higher than it was. And the, the biggest problem is, is that be, except for skills, there's really no way to get a higher life force. <laughs> so this is oh. it. This is all your life force unless you get the, in, uh, I think it's like the endurance skill or something. There's one skill that will add plus five to your, your base life force every rank. So be aware that since you guys are both kind of frontline fighters, you might want to take that skill. Which luckily has already been worked into the Goblin Slayer game system that I'm creating here. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it. Uh, let me see here. What skill is that? I actually have to check. The easiest way for me to find that is going to be checking the code because I have it marked uh, marked here. Uh, let's see. Hardiness. That's the name of it. Oh. Checking it by E, though. Yes. So for hardiness, uh, at level one, you gain plus five bonus to your life force, which may not seem like a lot, but it's a lot. <laughs> because then that also doubles to your total life force. So you, you get five for initial, and then you get another five for the double amount. So that helps you survive death longer. 
because uh, there's no coming back from death in this game. There's no resurrection spells. So and there are no disturbing throws. Exactly. So just to give you an idea here of why there's so many values here in life force, the 20 is your halfway point. Whenever your wounds get are equal to or higher than your half point, which in this case is going to be 20 for Lorendar's character and a 19 for her doctor's character. Once you are over that threshold, you start taking more fatigue every time you take a point of attrition in battle. So it, it shows the weariness of battle and whatnot. If you ever gain, if you're ever at or over the amount of your total, the double your life force. For, so for instance, Lorendar's is 40, 38 is for Hair Doctor. If you're at that or over, you're dead. And that's it. There's no coming back. So you have to be very aware of when you're wounded, how hard you're wounded, and whether or not you should probably escape battle because there is a, a stage and phase to combat where you need to decide, are you running away from battle or not? Can you finish this or should you regroup and try again later? Or uh, not even bother if, it, if you think it's too hard for you. All right, and then let's see here. So we've determined spell uses, we got our movement done, and we have our current and proper life force, uh, forces in play for Lorendar's character. Let me go back to creation here. Now that we have that stood us down, we need to spend your experience points and uh, write down your adventure level. So as I stated before with Hair Doctor, uh, to get level one in a, in a class level, it's 1,000 experience points. To get level two, it's an additional 1,000. And then to get to level three, it's an additional 1,500. So there's no way except for in the cases where you gained a level through character. So if you wanted to get to level three of a scout, it is possible, but then you wouldn't have uh, a level in any other class until you completed your first quest. So Lorendar... What would you like to do with the 3,000 current experience points you have? How would you like to spend those? Uh, yeah, definitely two levels a monk. Okay, so that will be 2,000 experience points. And now you have 1,000 points left over, which means you could go to level two of scout as well if you wanted to. Oh, that's true. I could do that. Uh... Now, you could save the 1,000 experience points because they're... I believe there is a mechanic to convert experience points into advancement points so that you can buy more skills, but that's entirely up to you. Because if you have the higher level your scout is, the better your bonus is going to be to hit with thrown weapons. Uh, yeah, any type of uh, ranged throwing weapon. The only, uh, the only difference is that... Um, Ranger is the only one that can use projectile weapons like bows and arrows or crossbows. Rangers, uh, or scouts, excuse me, scouts are good with any type of throwing weapon such as a spear, a hatchet, a throwing knife, and so on. Right. But, yeah. Plus, they're also really good at thief stuff. Hmm. So you have that one thousand. Yeah. yeah, let's do the let's do the second level of scout. Okay, so go ahead and uh, wipe out your current experience points to zero. Make sure you leave cumulative at three thousand. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Now, uh, Lorendar, we are at the same point here where you need to decide how to spend your advancement points on skills. Yeah. So like I said, I think I go to mine. So okay, uh, I will. Me. Yep, I'm gonna leave Lorendar so you can check over all of the skills in the compendium, and decide how you want to do that. Remember, it's five advancement points per adventure skill and one for general skills, and you can't go higher than one. I forgot to tell you that you can't go higher than one until you get to level two uh, adventurer. So just be aware of that. All right, Herr Doctor, what skills are you looking at? Okay, I have uh, two skills for my adventurer okay. uh, skills and five skills for my general skills. Ooh, buddy, okay. <laughs> yeah, because uh, 
Yeah. One, two, technically be able to do something outside from combat. Right, as you should. Yeah, okay. So the first skill I'm gonna add is hardiness. Okay, perfect. Because of my basically mediocre health at this point. So where do I drop this? Just in the skills? Uh, yeah, you you can probably drop it anywhere in the character sheet, and it will drop correctly into the skills section. Okay. Yep. Okay, I so... see hardiness. One. Perfect. And... Another skill I'm gonna be taking is uh, the skill that will help me help me in the physical combat. Okay. Mow down. Mow down. All right. Let's take a look at that one. Something that the DD fighter should have had a long time ago. All right, so the description for Mowdown is you use a two handed weapon to make a single melee attack oh. against multiple enemies within two hundred. Yeah. yeah, it's for two handed weapons. There is a dual wielding uh, skill if you were looking to do two handed. Or no. No, I, I was going to go so sword and board. So. Yes, yeah, sword and board. That's correct. Okay. So we'll have to rethink that. Yeah. That other well, I had the other one that uh, I was thinking about. That is guard. Guard, okay. Let's take a look at that. All right. So when one character of your choosing within range is the target of a melee attack, ranged attack, or spell attack, you may take the damage from that attack instead of them. The PC with guard should decide whether or not to use it after the enemy decides on its target, but before the enemy performs its check or spell use check. All right. And so once it goes off, you can do a couple other things here. So at rank one, you can use guard one time per round. When you use guard, you can take the attack for one character within reach, which is five meters, targeted by a melee attack, range attack, or a, uh, or attack spell. So yeah, you can basically guard your guard your friend there, which could be super helpful. Yeah. Just let me take all the damage. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes, and since you're going to have a shield, that will be super helpful. Yeah. All right, so that is 10 of your advancement points. Yeah, okay, as for the general skills. Yes. Since I was basically going to make a somewhat of a paladin, I think I have uh, general skills that are basically something that would resemble what skills would pardon have so first off is faith okay and of course i'm gonna pray to the ancestral dra dragon because you have to That's yeah it. yep all right so right off the bat right click on faith and then go to view and yeah. then in the name itself switch the xx to say ancestral dragon wait have you I'm gonna copy and paste oh hello hey. oh there he is yeah i just need a minute to get back onto my computer uh i just woke up i'm sorry i overslept yeah no worries dude no worries no worries and since I have faith, mm -hmm. I can also uh, pick up warship skill. Ah, yes. So let's take a look at what the faith ancestral dragon allows you to do at beginner level. Uh, you can use miracles or ancestral dragon arts from the object of your faith without chanting them. So you don't have to worry about chanting which is anymore, which is handy. However, you take a minus four chantless penalty to the spell use check, which will come in handy when we have to, uh, you know, do the modifiers and whatnot. So if you don't chant, you're going to take a minus four penalty at first, but you can correct that once you get higher levels by adding and uh, increasing the level of this. So at first you're a little, you're not so good at being able to do chantless faith or uh, ancestral dragon spells, but it could be handy when you need to be very quiet. And since you're running around with a, a monk scout, uh, silence could be very key here. Yeah, I do have skills, but um, 
But, but Adamari is Adamar, so. Exactly. And now we also have one for worship. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just to double check that one, you offer prayers to the gods, ancestral dragons, or so on. Uh, when you use worship, the standard score is your psyche plus a secondary ability score. Uh, this is a worship check. When worshiping over the course of three hours, if you pass a worship check with a target score of 20, you recover one spell use. Super helpful. And you can only recover spell uses by praying once per day. So you do get uh, a one-time use for, for that per day. I'll have to work into, I'll have to work something into that. And, and, uh, and since I have the skill, I also have a uh, plus one. Say again, what's the plus one from? Uh, f from worship to worship checks. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay, so that means you have three more uh, adventuring or advancement points left. Did you... I'm going to sound like a broken record here because the next one is theology. Okay. Hey, man, it works. Get, get the most yeah. out of it. <laughs> so, this is just uh, to recall knowledge on gods. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. No, that's that could be super helpful. Their teachings. Yep. Yeah. Also, if it's the character. Oh. Okay, and to... Go ahead. And to close off the uh, close of the basically cleric part of the, the dragon warrior, we have meditate. Mm -hmm. Wait, no, meditate is not my class. Sorry, but I can get leadership. Okay, can make those weaker position. Or just recognize them without work effectively. Oh yeah, yeah. Meditate is for sh sorcerers or shamans. Okay. Leadership. Now I'm seeing four in your general skills, which means you it looks like you have one more left for advancement points. Yeah. I could do cool and collected to have a plus one to psyche resistance and intelligence resistance checks. Hmm. Yeah, that could be super handy. And since uh, or And yeah, now that would be, I don't think, appropriate in this universe. I could technically do writing, but I don't know if uh, we are going to ride or have any mounts in this campaign. So I'm going to take something that is basically going to be in this campaign. And if we get some, at some point horses, I'm going to get uh, the riding skill. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that's for me. Cool. All right. Now that you're done there, uh, the next thing for you, Hair Doctor, is going to be looking at what spells you want. And because you have two levels in Ancestral Dragon, you get to pick two spells to add to your character sheet. So while you're looking at those, I'm going to switch back to Lorendar here. All right, Lorendar. What are you thinking for skills? You said five advancement points per skill, right? Per adventurer skill and one per general. So I'm seeing you have martial arts and alert for two adventurer skills, right? Yeah. Okay. That puts you at 10 points used so far. And go ahead and mark those at rank one. All right, so do you want some general skills or do you want to go with one more adventurer skill? What are your thoughts? 
That is the question. There could be some decent, uh, decent general skills for a monk or a scout. Uh, since scouts are more of the rogues, you could, you know, criminal knowledge could be good. Cool and collected could always be handy because it gives you that plus one to uh, intelligence and psyche reflex saves. And those are, the reflex category is just like you expect. It's going to be your, your saves, basically, for whenever you have to dodge a spell or try and counteract something that's happening to you uh, in the area. So like a wisdom save would be like a psyche uh, a, a psyche or maybe even an intelligence uh, reflex save so that's where cool and collected could be handy um long distance movement is always a good one potentially because that will allow you to move over greater distances uh, of time if you find that a campaign is really pushing where you want to go uh, just about anything else Otherwise, you know, another adventurer skill could be handy. Oh, I see you went with the alert. <laughs> oh, what's really nasty is alert and martial arts both add into my dodge check. Ooh, nice. Nice. Okay, you'll have to remember mm -hmm, now... Yeah, the... the funny part is alert is built into the game system, so you don't have to worry about... Uh, worrying about critical roles that will work itself out you'll just have to remember to add in the plus one bonus for martial arts that's all okay okay i've got my spells right now i'm going to going to get minor heal for okay. if we need healing anytime yep super handy and uh, for and if we need the uh, and we, I also will take Dragon Breath. Nice. Excellent. Okay. Uh, very good. I should have warned you, but you've already taken spells with low DCs. You're basically able to pick whatever spells you want. The problem is that some spells have a really high DC. Like, uh, for instance, there's one spell for p words of true power called Blizzard. And that has like a DC minimum of 20. So you would want to wait until you've had a couple levels in Sorcerer or whatever for Blizzard to pick that spell out. But luckily you have a DC 5 and a DC 10 check. So these should be super easy to hit at level 1. Uh, the problem is, is that if you don't hit the DC, the spell fails and you lose the spell. So luckily healing is going to be no problem. Dragon Breath might not work sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And thankfully, I have somewhat of a good psyche. Yes. So it should go off. Hey, Cyrus. I'm going. I'm using your your Discord names in this one. You said generals going to cost one point, right? Yes, so you yeah. could add five general skills if you wanted to. Or go crazy and, and do we... 15. <laughs> right, and do we, we save any leftover ones? Um, yes, if you don't spend them all, you can save them to help you rank up uh, skills when you hit level two. Okay. Oh, uh... So there's one thing, luckily, uh, you, uh, since you have someone with a spellcasting class, luckily Hair Doctor has spellcasting classes, before combat begins, anyone with a spellcasting class gets a free monster knowledge check right at the beginning of combat to learn basically anything there is to know about them. So if you want to make sure that you know about a monster uh, later on, Hair Doc, you may want to look into the monster knowledge check for spellcasting as a skill because that will help you be able to get a bonus to understanding what the monster is and what to be aware of. Just for future use. 
I mean, I don't think my character would particularly be known for that, but okay. I, yeah. I will keep that in mind. Yeah, just something to be aware of. All right. Uh, I see you've got two skills so far. Uh, while you look at the last three, or do you, are you you saving those three? Uh, well, I've got martial arts that were long distance movement, cool and collected. Yep. So that leaves you with three advancement points so far. If you want to save those, that's perfectly okay. You don't have to spend them all right now. I mean, if I w were to suggest any, uh -oh. because you were an engineer, you, you could use craftsman, ship, uh, or artisan. I made a mistake. I already have, I already have craftsman. I start with it because of engineer. I have to uh, backtrack here. I made a mistake. I don't know where I got the 15 for, for, for advancement points, but looking over, oh, okay. looking over the... Uh, the rule book you actually only get 10 advancement points i'm really sorry guys ah uh, uh, shit yes i know i'm terribly sorry about that so well there goes my guard <laughs> all right so luckily if you right click on guard you can go ahead and delete that from the skills okay and then lauren dar it's up to you all right getting rid of your generals unfortunately okay so that will leave you at zero advancement points then all right so we got your classes picked out uh let's see here we got that uh fire tech classes yeah we know all that spell casting classes okay Acquiring skills and spells, we've done that for Lorendar and Hair Doctor. Purchasing equipment and possessions. Okay, so a character will always start with adventuring tools and seven days worth of rations, both of which are already written in the adventure sheet, but those aren't written into the adventure sheet. So I need you to go ahead, go to your items and drag and drop into your... Uh, into your character sheet for items, adventuring tools, and rations, and then put in seven for the uh, the amount. For my items. Yep. Adventurous tools, quality one. And then rations, quantity 10, right? Uh, seven. Oh. Uh, yeah, there's two options for rations. There's rations and then rations one day set. Uh, if you do the one day set and then times it by seven, that'd be good. I think the other one ration, if you look at the, if you click on it, it probably opens up and says like, oh, this is worth seven days or three days worth or something. Uh, nope. No. no. All right. Uh, buyer's choice, I guess. Whichever, just uh, pick one on, and hold on. unless there's a difference. Okay, okay, yeah. So rations is uh one meal per rations one day set is three meals. Okay. And there's a, a value difference. Rations one day set is worth five silver per and regular rations is two silver per. Alright, so since this says seven days worth of rations. I would say pick the, the ladder and get seven of those so that you have seven full days worth. Okay, so the one day okay. set? Yep. Okay, and then you guys can add 100 silver to your money and you can use that to buy and whatever equipment you need. You said there was another one we need to put in there too? Uh, adventuring tools. The rations? Yeah, adventuring okay. tools. Ah, fair enough. So this includes 10 meters of rope with a hook on the end. So you guys get 
grappling hooks, no problem, without having to worry about it. Hey, Mike won't forget <laughs> the rope. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ten wedges, a small hammer, a tinderbox, a rucksack, a water bag, portable rations, which are the seven days worth of rations, chalk, a small knife, and six torches. So you guys could probably also drop in, um, I think the wedges and whatnot are there, but if you don't want to worry about it, you can always just update the description as you use those later on. Yeah, I'm gonna update the description. Okay. Whatever works for you. All right, now you guys get to buy stuff with your 100 silver. And um, make sure you double check what your gear is appropriate. If you go into the rules, uh, the Goblin Slayer rules that uh, everyone should be able to see in the uh, the journal section or in the compendium. If you go to classes, you'll be able to see, let's see here, does it have, yes, it has, you know, it has recommended, but it doesn't have the, uh, shoot, I, I didn't, I was hoping I had this also set up for like, what's the appropriate gear for each class? I mean, I'm a fighter, oh, so I have everything. What was that, Lorendar? It's it's in the PDF. Okay, yeah. Double check the PDF, too, for your classes. So, yeah. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I will double check your stuff once you're done to make sure everything is appropriate. But you have 100 silver, so have fun. While you guys are buying, I'm going to work with Cyrus here for his character. All right, Cyrus. What are we doing here? What kind of character are you thinking about? Because unlike 5th edition and Pathfinder, the classes are option like they are completely optional. The only thing you would want to know right off the bat is if you want to do any kind of spell casting. That's going to be important. Beyond that, uh the classes are your oyster or whatever. The world's an oyster kind of thing. An oyster is a world, whatever. What do you think? What's your character concept? Uh, what's party makeup so far? So far, we have Hair Doctor playing a Dragon Knight. So he's going, uh, right now, currently two levels Fighter and two levels uh, Ancestral Dragon. And Lorendar is going Monk Scout. So he has two levels of Monk and two levels of Scout. Don't which... tell him the we, we shall we see if he chooses the same one. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Yes. So scouts are basically your rogues in this game and the reason initially lorendar was looking at going uh monk shaman but then ended up getting a free level of scout and decided to go more of like a ninja based off of monk and scout which he should totally go with like the the classic goblin slayer names and call himself some kind of like something ninja <laughs> as his character name So we have two frontline fighters, uh, the main fighter being the fighter and the monk being a secondary fighter uh, with some potential ranged capabilities because of scout. We also have a quote unquote divine spellcaster with dragon priest. So I don't recommend going full spellcaster because that can really hinder the group. If we had maybe a fourth player or even upwards of five, I would say, oh yeah, if you want to, if we have five players and you wanted to go total sorcerer or total shaman, you could totally do that. But I would still recommend some kind of a melee or martial uh, class as well as uh, having a caster class if you wanted to go caster. Totally up to you. So the only things that haven't been selected so far are ranger, sorcerer, priest, and shaman. All right, Ranger Sorcerer it is. Okay. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and pick your race. So since uh, no one decided that they wanted any kind of a custom race, which of the five standard races do you want to pick from the uh, compendium? So if you open the compendium and open up Goblin Slayer content and go to races, you'll see the five that are available. Now you can min-max here, and I'll, I'll let you know that uh, sorcerer is primarily going to be dependent on in, into, uh, intelligence and ranger is very dependent on uh, technique. Probably uh, one or two other things too, if I can find the class fast enough here. Let's see here. Recommended. 
Oh yeah, here we go. All right, so Ranger's important ability scores are going to be Technique and Intelligence, and then Sorcerer is going to be Intelligence. So if you want to pick, if you want to min-max a race that has great Technique and Intelligence, by all means, go right ahead. Pick Elf, then. All right, Elf it is, which uh... is going to be uh, threes for Technique and Intelligence, if you go with the fixed scores. So go ahead and drag and drop the elf into the uh, into your character sheet here, where it says "drop a race sheet here." And yes, Hair Doctor is a little let down because both him and Lorendar are playing lizard men, <laughs> which was really funny to see. But Elf is very good, uh, exceptionally good for being a ranger because they start with weapons bows, which is going to be super handy. Wasn't the elf in the show also a ranger? Yes. Uh, she is High Elf uh, High Elf Archer, I believe is her name. Okay. Now that we have Elf in your character sheet, on the picture of Elf, go ahead and right-click on that picture and then click on View. And that's going to give you your racial sheet here. Now, you start with those three skills, and those are automatically added to your skill section. So if you go to your skills tab, update the rank to rank one. Well, you guys don't have to worry about torches, because you can all see in the dark, which is going to be super handy for you guys. Okay. Uh... So you can see up to 60 meters in the dark. You have Beloved of the Fae, which means your spirit arts without... You can use spirit arts without possessing a shaman bag and without spending catalysts. Uh, if you don't go shaman, that's perfectly okay. It's just unfortunately a skill that doesn't help you unless you at some point pick up shaman, which you totally can do later on. And then you also get a plus one bonus to hit checks with your bows, which right now this weapon skill hasn't been implemented into the game so you'll have to remember to add in that plus one bonus when you go to roll uh, for your hit checks later on okay now that we have the race picked out we need to determine are you using the fixed scores or are you going to randomly determine them no I'll use a fixed score okay everyone seems to have been picking the fixed scores <laughs> I'll keep the rules then that everyone else is following. Yeah, and it's it's totally up to you. Uh, since you're going with the fixed scores, go ahead and put in uh, for your primary and your secondary all the fixed numbers there. So one three three three, and then two one three across the top at, on the stats tab. Okay, we got the primary abilities in place. And you'll notice as you put in the ones that's across the top, they are, they are automatically adjusting for you. Now, uh, we're going to jump a couple stages ahead and get to this right now. You have the ability to add plus one to any of your primary scores. So you can add one to strength, psyche, technique, or intelligence. Where would you like to add your plus one bonus? And I'm just going to check the rules to make sure it's just the primaries. And we'll have to uh, take a step back for everyone because we missed two things for your background. Oh. But it's nothing major. Um, yes, yeah, so you choose one of your four primary ability scores, strength, psyche, intelligence, and an intellect, and add plus one bonus point to it. You can choose whichever ability score you'd like to add this bonus point to. You can use it to compensate or for a low score or make it a good score even better. All right, so I see you picked technique. Perfect. Okay, so that gives you some really nice bonuses all across the area. All right, now that we have that. Um, yeah? Hair doctor? No, I just saw something that I should probably took, but nothing major okay now we need to go and determine your history uh saris so go ahead if your character if your race sheet is still open otherwise go back to your description and open up right click on your your elf portrait 
and then there is a clickable link that says Elf Origin Table. Uh, op click on that to open up the rules book to that specific page. In there. Mm hmm. <clears throat> All right, when the uh, the rule book opens up, let me know. It's open, I'm there. Okay, so here, you are going to roll a 2d6, determine your background. And the handy thing here is that you get extra stuff depending on what kind of background you get. Sometimes you might get a bonus level, uh, sometimes you might get a bonus skill, or you might get other things as well. So in the uh the chat tab or chat messages go ahead and roll 2d6 to determine what kind of background you get randomly i don't have any dice roller uh you do have the dice tray at the bottom no i don't hmm it should be there try reloading totally the blank that's totally blank try... try reloading yeah try reloading There, now it's in. Okay, perfect. And sometimes if it's faster, you can always just do the chat command of slash R space and then the number D whatever as well. But I like the dice tray because that's super helpful. Okay, we got an eight. So your background is a poet, which is super handy because you get one level of sorcerer or shaman as a bonus for being a poet. Take one level of shaman. I thought you wanted to go sorcerer though, or do you want the bonus for shaman anyways? Because you can totally do that. Might as well get it. Okay, so on your stats tab, go ahead and put in one for shaman. All right. Now you also get the general skill of perform improvised poem. So you get a free skill as well. Uh, if you want to go to the compendium, you can open up the skills tab and then just write in, uh, what is it, perform? Because it'll be perform colon XX and then drop that into your character sheet. Okay, now in the perform skill in your skills tab, first update it to level one. And then right click on the name, like, yeah, right click on the name or the image. No, it's the name. All right. So right click on the title and you'll see a view. Go ahead and click view. And then at the top where it says XX in the name, uh, switch that to say play or no, I'm sorry, improvised poem. So it'll say perform colon improvised poem. All right, perfect. Now we have that taken care of. Uh, we're gonna do the next step here, which was we missed a couple steps for our history for everyone. So everyone go to your descriptions page for the moment. And uh, Saris, for your history, hover over the blank area where it says history and you'll see a little button pop up. Click on that and write poet as your background. And then from there, I need everyone to roll some D6s for me as well so we can determine um, defining events and one other thing. All right, let me get to that. Ah, uh, yes, here we go. So we need to determine a past, like who you were before you became this adventurer. Apparently, I was always an adventurer. Um, ironically, yes, but you also get a past. So your history is that you were an adventurer uh, for for Hair Doctor. He was a background for uh, adventure, which was cool. Uh, but now you also get something else, which gives you an extra skill, ironically enough. <laughs> so uh, Hair Doctor, go ahead and roll 2d6 for me. Rolling right now. Oh, shit. Ooh. So your past is palace so go ahead in your history add in your past as a, as uh the um 
palace, okay? And then I'm going to let you know more about this in a second. Uh, so the description here says you visited palaces on occasion, which means you weren't necessarily from a palace, but because you're a, an adventurer, you went to palaces. I was a bodyguard. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Now, here's the other thing. You get uh, the skill acquired from this. You get etiquette. So you can add in the etiquette skill oh, at, okay. at beginner to your skill background. Okay. Skills. All right. So while he's doing Skill that, etiquette. Lorendar, roll me 2d6, please. Man, if you get a nine, I would be, I'll be laughing my ass off. <laughs> Lauren, are you there, buddy? I think he might be MIA. Uh, Cyrus, go ahead and roll me two d six. We'll do your uh, you will do your past as, uh, while we wait for Lauren to get back. Wait just a second. Yep. Okay, eight. So for you, uh, this makes total sense. <laughs> oh my god. The way these things are playing out. So your background is a poet, right, Cyrus? Your past and where you came from is destitute. You know what it's like to be poor and how it feels to go hungry. <laughs> so that's your past. And you get the survivalism general skill added into your skills at beginner level, which is rank one. Or it might be an adventurer skill. I'm not really sure where that lands. Let's see here. Oh yeah, okay, that's a general skill, survivalism. My god, that works out too easy, too well. All right, uh, since we're waiting on Lorendar to get back, we'll jump down na next to determining yeah. your encounter. The, this is an important relationship with someone else in, the, in your life. That connection may still be the same as it was, or it may have changed or vanished altogether. So, hey doctor, go ahead and roll me another 2d6 to determine your uh, encounter. On it, boss. Uh, uh... I have uh, returned. Oh. Oh. I have to make an emergency run to the bathroom. Okay, perfect. We will get back to you in a second. Okay, so for four, uh, your encounter was junior, uh, Hair Doctor. So this means you have a junior who looks up to you and is friendly with you. Does this mean I have a squire? Uh, it sounds like it, yes. <laughs> I love it. Oh, this works out too good. All right, uh, Lorendar, go ahead and roll me 2d6. We are going to determine your past, because I totally forgot about this, and it will give you an extra bonus skill. Oh, damn, it wasn't nine. Okay, five. Temple. Yeah, this works out, because you are uh, partially a monk. And uh, engineer. Interesting. So, for okay, the temple... So what? what was that here, Doctor? So, what would have been the nine? The nine would have been school, which would have been really funny for having an engineer background. All right, so for temple, whether you were entrusted to the temple or uh, entered it of your own accord, you have lived in a temple in the past. You gain theology for uh, at the beginner skill. Uh, as a skill, you gain theology. All right. Okay. All right. Cyrus, give me a 2d6 roll to determine your encounter. This is what helps you, I guess, go into the life of being an adventurer. Or this is just something going on. Ten. Okay. Yeah. Ten. Betrothed. You have a lover, either decided by a par parent or one to whom you've sworn your future. Kind of makes sense with a, being a poet. I don't know. What, what do you think, Saris? Just one? Just one? <laughs> hey. <laughs> no one oh, says it was just one. He's going all of a sudden. <laughs> Oh I'm man! I'm just gonna turn into a bit direction. Man, this is like that time when uh, playing uh, Rhyme of the Ice Maiden, someone made a a couple that uh, fact an eyeball. Mm -hmm. Indeed. All right, so uh, Lauren Dar, yeah. in your history, go ahead and write in your uh, your what was it uh, the the temple, just so you know for your your past that you've lived your life in in the temple one way or the other. Uh, and then go ahead and roll me another 2d6 for your encounter as well, uh, Lorendar. Uh, 
Can't wait to see what this is. Oh, it's a seven. Okay. Family. You have family that you are especially mindful about. So that is your encounter. So go ahead, make sure you guys write down your stuff in your history or wherever you'd like to write it in other information or whatnot. Uh, you can also fill in the age, gender, hair, and, and eye description whenever you want to do that. Uh, let's get back to Cyrus's character here now that we have the history worked out. All right, we've added the bonus point. Now we're going to do your status here, uh, Cyrus. And this is the important role. This is similar to rolling stats for a fifth edition character. I need you to roll three, uh, 2d6 three times. And we're going to remember those numbers because they are going to be used for your life force, your movement, and your spell casting. So we have a seven, an 11, which is really good, and a 10. And that's almost exactly what I had. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So since you want to do spell casting, right, Cyrus? One of those high level ones, I would highly suggest being your spell casting usage because a 10 or 11, I believe, is going to give you two uses of two, two spell uses per day. Now, right off the bat, that means you can cast two of your spells twice without any problems. You will be able to overcast later on down the road so if you've run out of spells and you're like shit i really need to use my spells right now you can fatigue yourself out to be able to cast again but with more fatigue comes really hard problems so what do you what do you think would be the best number you would like to use for spell casting i mean even the seven is usable the seven would give you one use but do you want one or two uses per day yeah, go for the two uses Okay, now let me double check here real quick. Uh, number five. All right, I got to scroll down to five. Just want to make sure I get to that. And okay. So yes, 10 through 11 will give you two uses. Okay, so go to your spells tab. And where it says t spell uses, put in number two there. That will be on the uh, the top left of the spells tab. Perfect. So now you have two uses available to you right now. Um, and then uh, from there, we will determine your movement speed and your life force. Now, luckily, you're an elf. So elves can move pretty far naturally. They have the highest movement out of all the races at a times for bonus. So if you were to use the seven for your movement, I would totally totally understand that because you then you could use the uh the 11 for your uh for your life force which is going to be super important as well unless you want to be super moving like be able to move really really far and use the 11 for movement which would give you a 44 feet that you want you could move totally up to you what what do you think would be the better option for your life force and your movement because like let's see here right now if you were to use the seven times four for your elf racial movement, you're going to be going 28 meters per per movement, which is already farther than anyone else in the group. If you were to go with the 11, you could go 44 uh, meters per, per round without fatiguing yourself out and could go super far. But you don't want to get hit then if you're going to go with the seven for your life force. I'll keep on standing then. I'll have to go with the 11 for health. Okay. So... For the 11 for health, you're going to take the 11 and add it to your strength, your psyche, and your endurance. So that's going to take the 11 plus 1 and 1 is going to be 13 plus an additional 3 is 16. So that's going to give you 16 for your life force. So if you go ahead and put 16 in there for your life force, that will give you a 16 and a 32. Now let me explain this really quick. The second box says 16 just like the first box does. The second box is your th your your break like your threshold. When your wounds go over 16, every time you take a point of attrition in the attrition track, you're going to gain two points of you're going to gain one point for regular or two points for a red box. So, it's going to be highly important that you don't get hit, okay? If your wounds ever get to 32 or higher, you're dead. 
your character is just flat out dead, okay? And the same goes for fatigue for anyone. If you ever click the fifth checkbox for fatigue, your character dies. Now, yeah, I'm used to that mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, the way to mitigate this is that there is an adventurer skill called perseverance. And every rank of perseverance gives you an extra checkbox. So if you're wondering, if you were wondering why is there a grayed out checkbox in the fatigue section, that's why. The perseverance skill gives you the ability to last longer in combat, to take more fatigue, and draw out the effects of fatigue longer. All right, so now that we've done that, we're going to take the 7 and multiply it times 4, giving you 28 uh, for your movement. So in that move box, go ahead and put in 28. So you can now move 28 meters uh, whenever you do a move action in the game. And the game is based on meters, so... Uh, when we get when we get into combat close range is five meters so you don't have to be right up against a monster like you do in fifth edition or pathfinder because each square is five feet every I'm, and i'm doing hex grids in this instead of squares every hex grid is going to be one meter so you're going to have to you're going to have a wide range of being able to control movement and being able to attack creatures because of that okay all right, now moving on from your statuses. Now you are, you've got your experience point and we've written down your adventurer level. You've already given yourself two levels of ranger and scout, which we actually have to take a step back real quick. Uh, to gain one level in ranger or scout, it costs you 1,000 experience points. You start the game with 3,000 experience points. So since you got a free level in shaman, which is great because that will help you with the uh, with your racial ability of not having to have a catalyst bag, which is awesome. Uh, we have to take one level back of either Ranger or Sorcerer because you can, to get to level two of Ranger, it costs 2000 experience points. To get to level two of Sorcerer, it also takes 2000 XP. You only have 3000. So either bring back one level of Ranger or bring back one level of Sorcerer. It's up to you. Okay, so we got level one ranger and level two sorcerer. Very good. All right, now we have our classes uh, picked. We need to acquire, uh, acquire skills and spells. So if you go to your skills tab, on the left side, you're gonna see you have 10 advancement points. Uh, and I'm going to shift the 3000 to zero since you've spent all of your experience on classes. To gain adventurer skills, it takes five advancement points. To gain general skills, it takes one adventure or it takes one advancement point. So the question is, what kind of skills do you want? Since you're more of a caster, I could recommend there's very few caster uh, skills, which is super handy, but there's a lot of caster spells, which is going to be a pain in the ass to pick later on. Uh, Take a moment here and think about how you want to spend your points, okay? Sounds good, thank you. Okay. I, uh, Question, if yes. someone of us buys a lodging? Yes. The, does that mean we have a room for the next night or something or like that? Yet, yeah, see, that's the weird thing about this game. They put so many random things into the items section that technically, yes, you could say that you have a room if you wanted to do that. You could say like, oh, I'm going to buy a room. And then you could throw that into your items and remind you, like, for instance, if you wanted to put the quantity as five, you could say you have yeah, five rent. days by, by rent. Yeah. 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 You could say that's the rent for the quantity. Okay, because I've had uh, some things that basically I have uh, some leftover gold and I did that with thing. But if that's the case, I'm gonna buy uh, two lodgings and alcohol. Okay.
Well, for the time being, uh, let me think here. You may not need to worry about lodging because technically in the world of Goblin Slayer, uh, the Adventurer's Guild has an inn. Although you would probably have to buy it anyway. So yeah, you could totally do that. It's up to you. Depends on yeah. how you want to work it I'm, out. I'm, I just want to have something to return to. Okay. <laughs> if uh, everything goes according to plan. Right. All right, so and I'm looking... Go ahead. Some alcohol. There you go. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm looking over your, your inventory right now, and I see you've got a broadsword, leather armor, and a round shield. And that's all my money. <laughs> it goes quick. Yeah. Yeah, because let's see here. The broadsword's 30. Leather armor is... 30 again, so that's 60. And then the round shield is 35. Yeah, wow. Oof. That's 95 silver right there. Jeez. Okay, so there's your, your gear and your loadout. Very good. Let's take a look at Lorendar. What did you do for your items? Uh, I'm still pouring over stuff, but I got the basic of it. Okay. Got most of most of my money's worth. Okay. Uh do me a favor, uh, Lauren Dart. The Bognock. Put the second, the the other one that says two handed. Put that into your weapons as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the way that. Do you want me to replace it with the the two hand or? No, no. Keep both of them in there, because what what happens here is that you can use this weapon one handed or two handed, and it increases the the damage and the power and whatnot depending on if you use one or gotcha. both hands for it. Okay. Because I think technically, or maybe... It's really weird to use a bog knock two-handed since it's a fist weapon. That's what I'm trying to think. Maybe you have to buy two in order to use them both at the same time. Or maybe it's kind of like you buy it as a set one for each fist. Yeah, that's what I don't but know. The, here's, here's, here's what it says under the recommended uh, monk set. Okay. Uh, I went with set B, uh, which came with bog knock, padded armor, gauntlet, and a healing potion. Okay. Which was a total of 83 silver. Uh, equipment for a more technical monk who can change their fighting style according to the situation. They can use bog knock on both hands to deal big damage, or they can use one bog knock to attack and a gauntlet to defend their open spots. Remember, since you are a uh, uh, man, you also have claws. Oh, right. Uh, Maybe we should also add those two weapons. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me take a look at your description there for being a lizard man. Yeah, I get the, the bonus from for uh, air-handed attacks. Picking up your yeah. comic heritage, Eric? Yeah, I'm just gonna also put bare-handed attacks into... The ones I have. Uh, Cyrus, yeah, he get they get them for free because they're lizardmen, so they have draconic heritage. Okay, cool. So, with draconic heritage, it makes my barehanded attack power uh, 1d3 plus 1. Bach knock one-handed is 1d3 plus 2. Yep. Now, you'll have to remember to add in those bonuses because Draconic Heritage hasn't been added into the game yet. Okay. Yeah. And, well, that's, and, that's and, yeah, Draconic Heritage will only come in if I'm attacking barehanded. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see here. All right, so, Cyrus, what have you been, have you got any ideas of how you want to spend your adv advancement points for skills? I had an idea and then I lost it. <laughs> oh wait yeah uh, i want to pick up magical talent okay at rank one all right let's take a look at that one okay so through training you have polished your talent at using spells you can now use more in a single day awesome so that, this gives you a plus one excellent all right yes so that will be five of your ten and now if you go to your spells, go ahead and mark that up to three uses because, unfortunately, it, the uh, skill hasn't been implemented yet. 
So go ahead and change your spell usage. Perfect. Now you can cast three times per day, which is really good. <laughs> yeah. All right. You have five advancement points left. Do you want another adventurer skill or do you want to go and just throw a whole shitload into general skills? Throw a whole shitload into general skills. Uh, let me remind you really quick, since you are more of a spellcaster than others, there is one in particular that you may want to look into. Now it's in the spellcasting uh, general or spellcasting adventure skills, and it's called Monster Knowledge. Everyone that can cast spells gets a free Monster Knowledge check at the beginning of combat, and only spellcasters can do this. Uh, what it does is, is that if you hit a certain threshold, you get to learn everything about the monster. Their weaknesses, how they attack, you know, how strong they are, what they might do, spells and whatnot. This is something you may want to consider picking up at some point. You don't have to pick it up now because you will still be able to do a monster knowledge check regardless. It's just that this skill gives you a bonus to being able to, to determine like, hey, this guy's a little strong or we need to wa watch out for this or so on and so forth. Yeah, I picked up that bonus. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and I also added the one to my Elder Armor set because also oh. the uh, Dracarian Heritage skill. Yes, yes. Yeah, so go ahead and yeah, I see your Leather Armor has gone up to three, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see here. Items. Yeah, uh, Lorendar, make sure you right-click on the Padded Armor name and then increase the armor score from two to three because of your scaly body. So you get a little extra bonus there of reducing damage. Oh, I could do that with my whole my hands too. Yep. Electronic heritage. Yes, you can increase those right off as well so that the you won't have to remember the bonus. You can just apply them into the weapon itself. Now, uh, Cyrus, there are some other things to be aware of. Anything that says like spell expertise xx or master of xx those are skills that can be rebought for the type of spell casting you do so since you're a sorcerer and a shaman you can pick up stuff for uh, words of true power and stuff for spirit arts so for instance uh, bonus spells xx would allow you to gain plus one or plus two plus three spells to be able to have in your quote-unquote spell book uh, one thing that isn't very apparent in the game is whether or not you can change out spells. I haven't seen anything through the book. I've read the book entirely and I'm rereading the book more or less as we go through this and there's nothing about replacing spells. So I'm going to suggest that in between quests or adventures, if you have a spell that you don't like, you can probably spend some time and maybe a little bit of money to switch out spells and get the spells that you actually want, okay? So now that you have spent all of your advancement points on the two adventuring skills, next you need to pick out spells. And at the moment, because you have a level two in Sorcerer and you have a level one in Spirit Arts, you can pick two spells for the Words of True Power and one spell from Spirit Arts. So. That's your next task, Cyrus, to pick out some spells. <laughs> Good luck. All right, so let's see here. Uh, after acquiring equipment, let's see here. For Lorendar and Hair Doctor, determine a profile. Let's see what that has to say. Hopefully no one gets motion sickness because I am just spanning right quick through all this whoever's watching this video later on <laughs> okay determining a profile what's this have to say oh yeah all right so determine your name age gender and rank adventurers completed and physical traits to complete your character profile for deciding on these see the explanation in section nine choose whatever name age and gender you wish for your character and then write them down uh, there are suggested age ranges for each race in the profile, I believe, or at least in the rulebook. Uh, elves are basically ageless, so there's no end, end like lifetime for them. They basically live forever. Uh, let's see here. 
for... I believe Blizzard might have the same way. Yeah, because they're basically always throwing themselves into combat. No one knows how long they live. <laughs> <laughs> They're always dying before they die naturally. Yeah, just like couples. <laughs> yep. Uh, you guys are already at porcelain rank, so you don't have to worry about writing that down. That's the uh, the default for your rank. Uh, that takes a little bit to rank up to obsidian and so forth. So for, you guys are going to be at porcelain rank, rank for a little while. Uh, for the number of adventurers and how many you've completed, those are already at zero. And then physical traits. Let's see here. Uh, you can describe how your character appears, including hair, eyes, and color. For Lizardman, use scale color instead of hair color. Uh, in addition, using your character's history, you can also you may also want to decide on what sort of experiences they've had for the reason they became an adventurer and how it happened. You can feel free to use the path and motives for becoming an adventurer on page 72. Uh, and then there's rules for creating a high-level character, which we don't have to worry about since you guys are all starting at level 1. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So for all intents and purposes, Lorendar and Hair Doctor, you guys are pretty much done except for your like your background information, like how you became an adventurer and so forth. Yeah, I'm going to start doing uh, the figurines in Hero Forge now. So Okay. Right, you can. Ooh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that part? Who, me or Hair Doctor? Uh, you. Uh, yeah, you are basically done, uh, except for anything in the descriptions tab if you want to switch it out. Uh, it looks like you've spent all your silver. Uh, yeah, so your age, your gender. Hair technically would be your, your scale color. Scale so color, yeah. I will, you know, I will end up picking a, uh, I'll, I'll put in like a little if statement. So in, since you are a lizard man, it will switch it from hair to scale the next time you see it. <laughs> and uh your eye color and then your physical traits and whatnot feel free to play with the rest of the the information Ooh. there okay uh Ceres, you have picked firebolt deflect missile and aqua vitae for your spells which is fantastic uh, again if you right click on the names you can view the information about these these are going to be important because uh as i forgot to mention for the other ones thankfully you've picked spells with low dcs uh, maybe you knew this inherently, but uh, the higher level DCs are going to be for when you get to higher levels of these classes because uh, there's like a blizzard that has a DC of 20. A level one character is going to be hard pressed to hit that DC of a 20 just to get the spell to cast. So luckily you have thought, low level DCs here. What was that? I thought about having that blizzard as one of my spells for just for the high DC, just for the joy of it. Like if I actually did hit it one time, but then it would be like, no, that's just for the memes. <laughs> right. That'd probably just get us killed in the end. Yeah. So luckily here with Firebolt having a DC of five, you're basically going to be hitting this every time. But depending on how hard you cast, like quote unquote, how hard the power is going to go up for this. So uh, for instance, if you roll a DC check to see how effectively you use Firebolt, uh, if somehow you roll a 17, you're going to be rolling 5d6 plus your sorcerer level in damage, which is crazy. And if you critically hit with the spell, you get a bonus plus 5, which is already applied in the, in the game, so you don't have to worry about remembering to add the plus 5 on a critical hit uh, for spells. That could potentially push the spell even higher. So if you normally average around maybe, you know, 14 to 15 and all of a sudden you crit the Firebolt spell, you might be hitting for 6d6 plus your Sorcerer level to one target within 100 meters with that Firebolt spell, which, oh, is crazy damage. <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> and I get to cast three of them. Yes. Or more. Remember, uh, you have three uses per day, but... You can always fatigue yourself for more casts if you need it. All right, so you have your spells picked out. The next thing for you will be, you got your status, you got your spells. You need to purchase equipment. So let's go to your items here. Okay, good. You have your adventuring tools and you have your rations like you already should have. In your money section on the right sidebar, down in the money, put in 100, perfect. Now start spending. <laughs> By all means, spend away. Uh, can casters wear armor? Yes, to an extent. Um, sorcerers. Uh, which and... which 
So yeah, I've I've got the the recommendeds here if you want to know what the recommended is. Uh, he has uh, sorcerer and shaman. Uh, for sorcerer armor is either a robe or a traveler's mantle. And you can go as high as That's light armor. Of course, recommended. Uh, just also and shaman. Go ahead. Yeah, shaman. They have cloth armor or hard leather. Yeah. So, the proper equipment for sorcerers is light armor and shields, as well as shaman. So, the highest you can go is light armor if you need be. But be aware that um, some gear have the heavy trait. So some armor have the heavy trait, which will uh, potentially fatigue you or help you reduce the amount that uh, the the modifiers have on you. So for instance, Hair Doctor's wearing leather armor. If we look at that, it's not a piece of heavy armor, which is good. So we don't have to worry about that. And for Lorendar's armor, he's wearing padded armor. Padded armor is also not heavy. So you just need to be aware. Buy a hunter's coat then. That's light armor. Okay. Now let's take... Yeah, it has a bonus if you're a ranger. Which he does have. He has one level in ranger, which is super helpful. Yeah, that's true. And the hunter's coat, let's take a look at that, is not heavy, which is nice. And if the wearer has at least one level in ranger, they gain a plus two bonus to dodge checks, which is going to be helpful. Uh, Very nice. Uh, the other thing too is that only fighters, monks, and scouts get to uh, get their class level bonus to dodge. So if you're wondering what the scores were on the right side, those are the classes that get are allowed to use their bonuses there. So, uh, for instance, melee, only fighters, monks, and scouts can add their their level to melee attacks. Throwing monks, rangers, scouts, projectiles are only ranger. Dodging is fighter, monk, or scout, and uh, block is fighter. And it's scout. odd that ranger doesn't get dodge. I know, right? It's a weird, weird system in some in some spots. Okay, I guess it's based on the idea that if you're a ranger, you shouldn't be in melee anyway. Right. Yeah, because they are all about uh, ranged weapons. Are there any weapon restrictions I need to be aware of? Uh, let's see here. Mm, no. No, just... Oh, wait, no, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, the only thing that they say is, like, appropriate weapons for shamans and for sorcerers, and those are none. There are no appropriate weapons for those, but you have a level in ranger. So, you can totally use, um, you can totally use projectile weapons and get the bonus. You don't have to worry about um, you don't have to worry about, you know, using these weapons and it affecting the spellcasting class. The only thing that would affect is if you were wearing the improper armor, like heavy armor. Uh, the other pain in the ass thing is tracking arrows. Uh, each quiver or, yeah, each quiver can only hold up to 10. And the more quivers you oh. have, the more it reduces your movement. So you have sorcerer levels too, right? Say again? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So it says uh, crossbows confer a bonus to hit modifiers and have high power, so the sorcerer will still be able to use them effectively even without acquiring any ranger levels. Oh. Huh. Which page is that on? Just so I can reread that. Uh, that is on page 108. 108. Recommended sorcerer set B. Okay. And it's only 40 silver. Yeah, I'll get that some bolts. Yeah, so let's see here. Uh... Oh, yes, because... Uh... Uh, I think it has something to do with like the technique bonus. So having so still having a high technique bonus will still allow you to hit, but because he has the ranger bonus, he's going to hit even better while having the ranger. So this is going to be a really good combo of uh, ranger and sorcerer. So you are definitely the back line. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I think I think I think it's a pretty interesting setup. You got Air Doctors like the hard close I'm the range. Paladin. I'm like mm -hmm. I'm close to mid range and Saris's total back line. Yes. Yeah, this is good. This is a good group. I like it so far. Yeah. Uh, um, if you want, I can basically right now stream uh, what I'm doing for my character in Hero Forge, but I'm nowhere near done. <laughs> okay. So. I don't forget, Sarah, to pick up a quiver as well to hold the bolts, which is annoying but unfortunate. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'll. Uh... If you want, I can just. Let me pop that out so people can see what's going on while uh, we wait for Cyrus to pick his loadout. Yeah, I had the idea about using this horn basically as a ornament in the helmet. Hmm. Yeah, that looks good. And then to decorate them kind of like the helmet. But I'm gonna have to get the theme going. Oh, that's basically a golden. Maybe something like this, since my character basically visits a lot of castles, so he's kind of got to look the part, but not too much. Hmm. I like it. Looks yeah. good so far. Changing. Right, let's see here. So have you used all of your money, Cyrus? All but three so far. Okay. Yes, and it's up to you if you want to pull all of the information out of your adventuring tool, like I said before, or just update the description. Totally up to you. Uh, let's see here. And I think we may be just about done once you get your equipment in place. Okay. I think that um, it looks good. Yeah, I like that. That's... All right, that's all my money. Okay, cool. All right, so one thing to remind uh, remember is if you have a shield, you can do a shield block in combat. Uh, otherwise, you have to rely on a dodge check to be able to avoid damage. Now, the problem here is that uh, a dodge check is all or nothing. If you dodge successfully against the attack, you take no damage. If you shield block, you're still going to take some damage, but the shield is going to help reduce the amount of damage you take. So be aware I mean, of that. I'm a paladin, so... Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, Hair Doctor's character is going to be uh, shield blocking more than anything, especially since you have the ability to do so. Because only fighters and scouts can shield block pro appropriately to get their level in there and add it in. All right, so uh, last question for everyone. Have you thought of a name? Now, it can be a typical adventurer name, something interesting, or it can be the Goblin Slayer style naming and naming your character based on your skills and classes and whatnot. So for instance, uh, the main characters in Goblin Slayer are Priestess, Goblin Slayer, High Elf Archer, Lizard Priest, and Dwarf Shaman. Anyone thought about their name? By that logic, I would be the Dragon Knight, but I think there is more to characters, but their sets of abilities. That's entirely up to you. Pick whatever kind of name you'd like. <sighs> Let's see here. All right. We have a name for Cyrus's, uh elf. Sorcerer Shaman, would you like to let everyone know your name? Quinlan. Ah, yes. Quinlan, the elf. Very good. And for our monk scout, the name is? Ghost in the Night. All right. We have Ghost in the Night and Quinlan. 
And Herr Doc, have you thought of a name for your character, or shall we leave that for later? Uh, I did a minor adjustment to my uh, equipment. Okay, no problem. Let's see here. Uh, I guess uh, this isn't the character name, but what our characters are known by kind of name. More or less. You know, it could be, you know, simpler, similar to Goblin Slayer. Goblin Slayer is a fighter and possibly a bunch of other things, but he kills goblins all the time. It could be a naming from your history or something. What do you think? In this case... Like, Dragon Knight is the only thing that makes sense. All right. Dragon Knight it is for now. You can always change it later if you want to be known by something else. Well, we could then share what our real names are among us, but... Yes, you could. Yeah, it's actually kind of funny. Uh, in, the, the, uh, in the books I've been reading for Goblin Slayer, the elves call him Orkbolg? And the dwarves call him yep. Beard Cutter. <laughs> yep. I don't know why. I mean, they explain yeah, the Beard Cutter one. I don't get. Yeah, like they dwarf shaman explains it. I read it. I'm like, I read it twice because I started to read the manga and then I switched to the light novel and I go, still don't get it. <laughs> well then, uh, I will update your name to Dragon Knight for now. So now I'm also going to end the stream. Okay. And I need to update. I will contact you guys with concepts of the characters I will have. And then we shall see. Hmm. Oh, are you doing the characters on? Uh... Yeah. Cause I was doing my character for now. Yeah. And I think I'm going to send it to you, Andrew, so you can edit B. But uh, first time I looked at the reference of the one character that was in the show, I, I thought like, oh, maybe I can use some bots. Then I looked at the uh, defeat more carefully and like, holy fuck, no bots are out of the question. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right, then. Well, it sounds like we are good to go, and we will get to playing next time. Uh, we will start our adventure and see what adventure you guys want to go on, as uh, you will be selecting some nice, hopefully, some low-level adventures to go on and start helping the, uh, the, what is it, the Adventurer's Guild out with the problems around the area. All right, guys? Sounds Let's good. Talking, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Great. I, nice. I'm excited to see how our two lizard men and elf get along and what happens in the game because uh, this should be a fun one alright until next time I will see you guys whenever we can get together to do this next bye bye bye, -bye. <laughs>